all right guys so welcome to today's video and in today's video i would like to work on a double fruit spawn system so i have made many videos on that topic years ago but in today's video i want to do some kind of advanced spawn system you know but before we start so many of you have been complaining about the lack of on peace game series aba series a uh, jojo game series whatsoever so i don't know guys you are not complaining about it but you you're, you're still not watching it you know so i could try to work on a solution in which uh maybe upload two game series videos and the rest is about yeah of that giveaway stuff i don't know why keep why people keep hating on the giveaway stuff anyways because um i'm not like giving away the stuff and then not explaining shit or anything because i'm dropping off the off the tutorials after one day after uploading all of those giveaway videos you know so there is like nothing to complain about but well so stay tuned i'm gonna i'm gonna try and upload two game series videos per uh, per, per week so maybe one one piece game one aba or one jojo one anime fighter whatsoever so i'll try to uh, make things happen for you guys but in today's video we're going to have this dull fruit spawn system right here so this video idea comes from a viewer a supporter of mine called senpai4 so shout outs to you bro so what we're gonna do in yeah what we want to do now is that we're going to set up some folders right here so Dull fruit spawn. And let's add some folders inside of this one. Let's give those folders certain names. So legendary, rare, common. Let's use these three stages. You can of course add your own ones if you want to. That should be it. So, what we want to do next is that we're going to add a script right here. Let's call this one EF Spawner. And we're going to refer to this folder right here to Delphi Spawn for. So, EF Spawn Folder Game One Get Service Replicated Storage. Yeah. Belford spawn folder. Let me actually use Wayford child on this one because it happened that the server loads faster than that folder, so I don't want to risk it, you know. Alright. So let me add some let me add some settings right here so to make things look easier for you. So we're going to have some settings right here. So the first one going to be the spawn time in seconds so that's important the second one is going to be about, is going to be about rarities so rarities All right, there we go. So those are our two settings I'll, I'll, I would like to do. And yeah, so the next thing is going to be about the spawn system. So we have this never ending loop right here, which waits this spawn time in seconds time you, you add right here. So you can edit this to 120, 240, whatsoever. It depends on you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna need to be explaining this rarities folder later on when we uh, actually work with it. So so after you have waited the spawn time in seconds, we want to do the following. So we want to create another folder. 
and we're going to call pick rarity okay and this folder right here it is going to be filled up randomly so it's for IB in pairs rarities do so pick rarity pick rarity plus one no wait no never mind never mind This will take 60 seconds so let me pause the video and let me come back when it has it has um, loaded okay so here we go so that's the thing which has been printed out so that's that's a table and yeah and this whole thing has picked out rare so let me explain the purpose of this table so we have a table right here okay it is first of all empty and then we are looping through this rarities folder uh, table and then we are once again creating a loop which loops from one to whatever this number right here is so b stands for all of these numbers and i stands for legendary rare and common so index and value so let's pretend that it, it currently is at legendary so i is legendary so the index legendary and value is five so right here it is going to loop through five times so and for each time it is going to refer to this empty pick rarity folder and it is going to index total amount of entries inside of here which is zero when it is empty plus one which is one so it is it is indexing the first entry and then it is setting the index so this one to the to whatever the first entry is so that's the way and how it fills up this table so first entry is legendary now as i've told you this is going to loop for five times so we have now dealt with the first loop now the second loop and in a second loop it is going to do the exact same thing just with one slight difference and this has to do with the spot with the entry is now editing which is a second entry because Big rarity, so the total amount of entries inside of here is now one because we we have added one to, within the first entry uh, within the first loop. Now this one becomes two, so total amount of entries plus one. Then we are indexing legendary once again. This just continues till you have finished the amount of loops, which is right here. Then moves on with the next one, which is going to be rare or common. I don't know how. Of this script is reading all of this stuff but well e either one of those and it just used the same thing for that and that's when how we fill up this table so and that's when uh, that's the reason why i've added this so if you want to add more chances um for legendary then increase this number and decrease the others so make sure that all of these numbers in total make up 100 otherwise well you, you could have a problem but yeah i i really recommend doing that so what is now going to happen is that we are going to randomly pick out one of those entries inside of here so like this one that's when how we've done it so we are referring to this table which is now not empty anymore because we have done this on it and we're indexing a random number which goes from one to the total amount of entries now which is 100. So it is picking out a random number from 1 and 100, and it, and it is indexing that spot. So that's it, guys. So 
big rarity there we go now we want to check if this rarity exists so if the f spawn folder find first child picked rarity then so if it exists then we want to loop through so we want to loop through that folder and Nah, we, we, we do not actually want to loop through it, but we want to do it like this. So, local df, it's rarity, get children, f random. Okay, so this might seem complicated, but don't worry. So, let me add some of my old fruits right here. So, OP fruit. So, those are very, very old fruits of mine, which I've created ages ago. So, let me add some fruits right here. So, so I only want those tools, you know, so too special right here. So let's get rid of this. Let's add this to common. Let's add this inside of here. Let's call it Goro. Move this inside of here, it's called OP. Let's move this one inside of here, it's called Silk. There we go. Let me change the wait time to 10 because 60 takes this takes too long. Let me print out the name of the doll fruit which we have now randomly randomly picked out. So just to see if this works. DF. So it so it has picked out this common DF right here. So this one, wait. This one. Let's see. Okay, now silk. DF again. OP. Okay, and that's how and how it works. So let me go through this. So we are referring to one of those folders, depending on which rarity was picked. Then we get all children, means we are getting all instances inside of there. And then we are indexing one certain instance. And this index works the same way as we are index as we have indexed this pick rarity table so we have a random number once again which goes from one to all of the total amount of instances inside of this folder so let's 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 use this as an example so we have this common folder which has two instances in total and it now generates a random number from one to two and let's say it picks out one means it is going to index the first instance, which is this one. So if it would pick out two, then it would index this one. Now, if we would have had three instances right here, and it randomly would go from one to three, then let's pretend that it picks out three. So see, you know, so that's in how it works. And we can now clone that doll fruit. So that's important. And it now another thing we should we should do is that we create a folder inside of here 
let's get rid of this so create a folder we call this one devil fruit spawns so call this devil fruit spawns and add some parts inside of here make sure that they are transparent make sure that anchor is true and can call it as false so and it doesn't matter how you call them so they they should just exist inside of that folder okay so that's the most important thing about it and you can literally pl place them anywhere so so let's let's do it like this now we are going to randomly pick out one of those parts and then just position the devil fruit to it so that's that's the whole purpose about it so the f parent workspace so we are cloning that picked dull fruit and we are parenting it to the workspace which means we are putting it inside of there but before we do that we want to change the c frame of it to one of those parts so the f handle come on df handle c frame workspace wait for child bell fruit spawns get children map random one there we go that's c frame so i'm gonna i'm gonna explain this in a bit as well so do not worry there are so, several things which you need to pay close attention to when adding your own, own delphrit to it so as you can see the first delphrit has spawned that's the delphrit template so it's yeah delphrit i think okay it has spawned once again And now I have spot over there. Oh wait, those are all free OP doll fruits. Okay, look, so that's Yuke. Yeah, so you you probably get the system out of it, so you understand what is happening. So let me explain this lot. So so every right, yeah, so every doll fruit right here has a handle inside of it so an instance called handle otherwise you wouldn't be able to use it so even this one so all of them okay otherwise you would not you, you wouldn't be able to use them so because requires handle is true so there is of course the option that you disable this and then create your own system behind of it means when you equip the tool, you're looking out for a port inside of there, which you which you belt into your right or left hand. So that, of course, will work as well. But I assume if you're able to do that, then you shouldn't be watching my videos because that's nothing a beginner could do. So let's pretend that your beginner requires handle has to be true and you need this handle instance. Otherwise, you cannot work with this tool. So those are the two requirements you need. Second, second, one, uh, second thing is that the handle has to be calculated true. Otherwise, it will just fall through the ground. And those are our requirements. So there's nothing else. So, and we're now referring to the F, so the tool, and then handle. And then we are referring to the C frame property. And then we are setting the C frame of this handle to, and now, we are referring to this double fruit spawns folder, getting all of the instances inside of there. And then we are indexing a random instance inside of here by using the same method as above here and as above here. And then we are setting the C frame of this handle to the C frame of the randomly picked out instance right here. And then we are parenting the fruit to the workspace and that's it. So it's pretty easy to script one of those. Yeah, that's it guys. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, share this video to all of your friends, leave me feedback in the comment section. Guys, take care and see you in the next video.